Beat Happenings, like their whole sound was like, like an innocent thing with a little bit of, there was every once in a while was a little bit of weird like adult stuff in it. You know, it wasn't really kids, but I, they always reminded me of like, you know, Peanuts or something. Like if, if like the Peanuts guys had like, when they were teenagers, the band they would have would have been Beat Happening, you know, that... I could always see that, or or the the part in the Christmas special where they're all dancing. That always just reminds me of Beat Happening so much, you know, because that was a vibe. It was like you know this really cool innocent music thing, and it was nothing. You know, nobody was really at that point. No one was really on drugs. You know, people probably smoked pot once in a while or something, but it was no there was no heavy drugs or anything like that. It was just pretty innocent. We were all pretty young. Breakfast in cemetery, boy tasting wild cherry, touch girl apple blossom, just a boy playing possum, we'll come back for Indian summer, we'll come back for Indian summer, we'll come back for Indian summer, the way. There was a version of Indian Summer that it was written on the bus that was probably three years earlier. And then I was walking home and I la- I forgot the whole song by the time I got home, except the title. But then uh, a couple years later, in fact, I know exactly what day it was because there's a poster here. Um, let me look here. We played a show with the Screaming Trees and Gold Trouble at, at the Capitol Lake Park in Olympia. And that was on August 8th. 1987. So that was after uh, we had recorded the the Be Heaven Screaming Trees record, like two weeks after. But a couple days before that, on Tuesday or Wednesday of that week, is when that song, I just woke up and I just, it suddenly just, oh, that, oh, okay, Indian Summer, okay. And it just came out. And then I was like, okay, well, that song seemed pretty good. So I had a rule that if I write a good song, I don't have to do anything else that day. So I went swimming. And then on Friday, when we got together to practice for the show the next day, the show in the park, I said, oh, here's this new song. I don't really know the, the music for it, but here, just play these two notes over and over again, and uh, that'll be fine for the show tomorrow. And then we can figure out this music later. But then two weeks later, we recorded the song for the album, and it was just, that was it. I remember it being new, feeling very new in the studio, that um, we had been playing a number of shows earlier in the year, so I feel like some of the songs we'd had a chance to work out live, which is always, you know, things can, are a little more developed then, and this one was just, completely fresh, which is also a nice approach sometimes to have in the studio where we where you're um, getting the feeling of the song's invention while it's being recorded and that excitement comes through. What is that cheerful sound? Rain falling on the ground. We'll wear a jolly crown. Buckle up, we're wayward bound. We'll come back for Indian summer. We'll come back for Indian summer. We'll come back for Indian summer and go a separate way. Was it an electric 12 string that the trees had over at the studio? Maybe. I don't remember. I don't I didn't have my electric 12 string or whatever. No. It's all part of the mystery. I had a uh, an old uh, Moserite 12 string that I used on a lot of tree stuff, but um, that thing, there's no way it could have sounded like that because it was like one of those, like, you could hardly play it. It was so hard to play it. Like, you got to fight the guitar to play it type of thing. I had possession of Bill Owen's guitars. Bill Owen was the guitar player in Pell-Mell, and the old Pell-Mell sound was based on Moserites and a Moserite guitar, uh, that's the sound of the Ventures and other notable places. It's not like a Fender or a Gibson. It's kind of a weird off-brand. And Pell-Mell barely used the 12-string because it was so hard to 
to tune. It was always falling out of tune. The guitar was kind of in crappy shape. So when Beat Happening picked it up and wanted to use it, I was like, first off, like, wow, this will be cool. And then second off, Indian Summer doesn't really change. It only plays in one chord all the way through. So it wasn't hard to make the guitar work if it was only going to play one chord. And yeah, the minute that sound happened, it sounded gigantic. It sounded huge. It was like, wow, this does not sound like the rest of the record. You know, is that the most melodic song on the record? It might be. That's probably one of my favorite songs ever. So, and like, it doesn't say on the record that I play. I played the acoustic guitar part, and so every time I hear, it, I'm like, I can't believe I played on that because it's like one of the coolest songs ever. You know, it was so easy to da 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 da. It was like over and over again. It is really hypnotic. What I like about it is that it's the same three notes as our secret. And basically, they're both songs where the, the music never changes. And uh, it just goes on and on. And I like that. I like that. That same as Bewitched is the same. Just the same three notes over and over again. No change. I mean, I always loved the song. Um, because I'm not a guitar player, it was always a little bit hard for, <laughs> for me to, like, make sure I didn't miss those two notes, you know, and... Um, get through the song, but uh, yeah, I always loved the song. I never quite saw it like why so you know like why that's the song that like so many people would like associate with beat happening. I remember just the simple drumming, the hypnotic guitar, and the way that Calvin's lyrics told such an evocative story that um, really had a timelessness from the start. I think that's what appeals to people. I touch your hem, you say. Let's stroll down Martin Way. Pick Plum's abandoned farm. Who let norms come to harm? We'll come back for Indian summer. We'll come back for Indian summer. We'll come back for Indian summer. Then go a separate way. Cover me with rain Walk me down the lane I'll drink from your drain We will never change I think it's a, just a great song. And the part about Martin Way, which is street in Olympia, we first that's the first street you come to is like the exit. It's like Martin Way <laughs> when you're coming from Seattle or Ellensburg. And um, it really captures the idea of what everything was like in the music scene back then. That was like what it was, you know, if you wanna like get an idea of what the whole beat happening at Olympia scene was like, that's it in a, you know, just this innocent, beautiful time when people are just having fun and not caring about viruses <laughs> or wars or anything like that, right? You know, I mean, that's a lot of, when you're young, that's a lot of the way people experience being young. But that was, you know, for us, it was like include music, which was, you know, really cool. And that song really kind of just like brings back that memory for me, I think. Motorbike to cemetery, picnic on wild berries, French toast with molasses, croquet and baked Alaskas. We'll come back for Indian summer. We'll come back for Indian summer. We'll come back for Indian summer. Cover me with rain. They always had that, you know, it's like this innocent thing, but wait, you're not innocent. It's like the loss that suddenly it's not quite as innocent as you thought. He's always got this evil side too in all the lyrics, you know, there's this, it's just like, it's like the kids thing, and then suddenly something about Satan or, you know, like sexual references or something like that that come up all of a sudden. <laughs>